Hi guys and welcome to Feywood. Um, I've got the heater on again today. You guys have mentioned in other videos that that was okay. You couldn't really hear it too much so hopefully that's okay again because it's cold in here so I needed a bit of heat um, because otherwise I was like feeling really sorry for myself and wanting to cuddle up in a big blanket. Um, I've got some really fun craft stuff to share with you guys. Um, as most of my hauls are, it's a bit of a collective haul and some things for some videos coming up soon as well. Um, so I figured I'd just share them all with you. Um, first couple of essential things, not exciting things. The Boil Craft Glue, you guys have seen me use this before if you've watched my tutorials. This is a really tacky sort of glue which is just handy if you need a glue that grabs instantly to what you're sticking on there so that it doesn't slide off as easily. It still will slide with this, it doesn't fully grab, but it grabs uh, better than say a PVA or what have you which has no grab to it whatever. Um, you know obviously it, once it dries it does but while it's drying having that tackiness can be helpful at times so I like using this for that reason particularly for videos where you don't want to have to prop everything up for every step and wait for it to dry because it's going to take forever to film that so um, while I was there I grabbed another methylated spirits um, so for people in Australia um, or anyone I suppose informational wise um, this is our equivalent it seems to the um, like uh, is it isopropyl alcohol you know just this sort of alcohol rub um, or rubbing alcohol is that what you guys call it I think this has a uh, another ingredient which makes it a proprietary like methylated spirits or whatever but uh, I can't remember what, <laughs> what the added ingredient is I remember reading that somewhere I could be wrong I'm no expert um, but I was trying to work out where to get you know like a rubbing alcohol in Australia because you know I never see it anywhere and then quickly realized this is apparently fairly much the same thing but it's slightly different um, not very much and called methylated spirits instead of rubbing alcohol anyway I like having it on hand for cleaning brushes sometimes and other things like that what I didn't have and have needed to clean some brushes in the past that have died on me is uh, some terps so mineral turpentine this is so good for cleaning um, different types of paint so enamel paints if, unless they're water based uh, you know any of your oil based paints um, you know it's like a paint thinner so it will start it will help clean brushes and things like that so I definitely wanted one of those and they're only a few dollars a bottle from um, Bunnings which is our uh, like hardware store in Australia uh, obviously we have other hardware stores but um, the Bunnings stores are these big massive warehouse type um, hardware stores that have everything so grab those um, I'm gonna show you some lace and and then some other things that I will be using some of this probably in my Skeksis necklace once I get started with that uh, so I'm glad it's coming in because it means I can get moving on my necklace I did the planning of the necklace the Skeksis necklace video which is up already uh, I'll try and remember to link it in case you're interested in that and want to go and check it out um, and I did say in that that there might be a delay between that and actually starting the necklace because I was waiting on some of this. So I got some lace. Some of this I got for other possible other projects. I wanted some gold lace for potentially um, a costume project which I won't go into yet because a, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, and B, I don't know if I can even do it. So, <laughs> um, but 
there is potentially some sort of costume project that I'd like to do um, and we'll see if that happens so I got this beautiful piece of lace now I figured it'd be a really nice collar type piece or it's very much like a crown shape so it could easily be uh, you know created into a crown design um, obviously it needs to be stiffened and what have you to do that but I, I just really liked that uh, I did want some different gold laces potentially for the Skeksis necklace because it's quite an opulent type of necklace I thought it would be nice to add some of the um, opulence with gold lace and things like that and I liked this sort of scallop detailing on this piece so I grabbed a piece of this these um, I've forgotten the name of the shop but I'll, I'll put it above it was um, an Etsy shop that I had uh, not used before and stumbled stumbled across I did put an order through two different sites the first one the both the things I tried to order they realized they were out of stock so that was a bummer because I was you know really glad with what I found I was like oh yeah they they are gonna work really well um, but turned out that, that it wasn't available it was like this really nice um, purple and black lace that was like you know really ri looked really rich and um, in color and yeah it looked really nice but yeah it was out of stock and I can't remember what the other bit was that I found but both out of stock so um, I got a couple of bits like this now this is a very similar um, type of lace to some of the stuff I've been using in other projects like my altered art containers uh, I think I used it on a hair piece I think I've used the gold lace in a bunch of things um, I think I used it on the, the magic mirror one and maybe a few even a few other things like that but the gold uh, lace um, like the thread that they use for it looks exactly the same which is like a really metallic coated lace and then a, a finer um, thread in the middle and yeah just really just pretty designs this isn't for the Skeksis necklace because I didn't want floral designs in that which this is a floral lace even though you probably wouldn't necessarily notice the fact that it's floral because it's gold I still thought no I, I don't want florals this is for potentially a costume I'll quickly mention the goblin ball has been sort of announced um, there's no dates yet and some people have been discussing whether it's this year or next year even though it did say 2019 um, I know it's potentially it was I, I was talking to um, Daniel who organizes it and he wasn't sure whether he could commit to 2019 but he wanted to so uh, we're still waiting on confirmation he's overseas at the moment um, but if you happen to be watching this please let me know a date but I plan to start making a costume regardless so uh, either way it's all right um, now a couple more bits of gold lace again possibly for the Skeksis necklace but probably more so for the costume that I am planning it's quite large so I, I think it might be a bit big for anything on the necklace but I just really liked these um, designs like very scalloped and everything so that's the that now this is definitely for the Skeksis necklace so it's this beautiful purple I'll hold it up um, it's got as you can see purple lace detailing on the outside and then netting there uh, now technically this does have little flowers on it too I've just realized but they're so detailed like they're so 
tiny that you wouldn't even notice. What I am going to probably do with this is make it into a rough for around the neck. Um, to beef that up because um, I wasn't sure whether it would be enough on its own to sort of sit up and everything. I, I got this stuff. Now I'm hoping this will work but I can't be sure. Um, so again this is like a ruffly netting sort of material with you can see it's got like layers there and I'll probably fold it over and have it you know around the collar I don't know something along those lines is what I'm thinking it will be I will go into this more when I start actually planning the necklace in more detail um, because I'll need to sit down with some of this stuff and work out how I'm going to construct it all because to be honest right now I'm really not sure and um, this one is going to test me a lot because of I'm, I'm trying a different sort of neckline which I like to do because it pushes my boundaries I always try and push my own boundaries with jewelry um, you know it keeps you interested it um, it pushes your skills and gives you a challenge so this is going to be challenging for sure now speaking of the Skeksis necklace I bought some neck cuffs so you may or may not have seen um, like necklace blanks like this before I found a seller of these ages ago in the States um, that had their own website and everything and then bought a bunch of neck uh, cuff things and didn't go back for ages to buy any more of them and like I'm um, and I lost the um, website so I, I couldn't find where I got it from and started looking for a new place to buy them in the end again I found them on um, Etsy and I'll have to put a, a notation of the shop name because I don't have them on hand it was a different seller to one that I've used before but uh, the price was good mainly I was looking for decent shipping to Australia as well because some of the other places had uh, you know $25 shipping or some some we had $40 shipping I think to Australia which it surely cannot cost $40 it certainly doesn't cost us that much to send to the States so uh, so that was a no um, but these I'm going to use one of these for the uh, Skeksis necklace and I grabbed a couple more because it's good to have them on hand I do like using them for necklaces and I didn't have any so but I'm going to do a reverse thing which you can't see because of all my hair um, but what I'm this is this is the idea so far at least anyway whether this works um, but in theory I figured I could put it upside down this isn't how you'd normally wear this but you know with the tightest part you know closest to the neck and then flaring out because then I can build my collar piece from this base which is already going in the right direction that's the theory whether that works we shall see and to what extent the collar will be I don't know because I may 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 don't know may make part of it a material as well that I can bead on and then have some of that lace rough in there as well this is all theory right now so I don't know for sure again when I have more time to sit down with this and plan it out you'll see the next video where I start to construct the necklace all right I've just quickly looked up on Etsy the um, sellers that I bought from so the fr the lace shop was called Beauty Fabric and uh, the other shop was called I'm not sure how to pronounce it but it'll be up in the notation but it's Calliopes 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 Attic I'm pro probably pronouncing that incorrectly but um, but I'll put a notation as well um, now from the 
Calliope's Attic Shop. I also got a couple more bits again for potentially the um, necklace and one was these, I don't know if you can see them, um, I'll hold one up at a time, how about that. So these are just like blackened stampings, um, they are hollow stampings but quite strong actually, like some stampings are very flimsy, thin metal, this is um, a bit sturdier. And I liked the um, ornate design of these, that really ostentatious shapes and the fact that it's black I thought would work with Skeksis because, you know, obviously a lot of their um, imagery is very black and dark, jewel tones, um, opulent and that sort of thing. So I thought, you know, having two of them so that potentially they could be either side of the necklace, I'm not exactly sure where, maybe on the collar part somehow. Again, that's all to be determined at this point. But I thought potentially they would work out quite well, so I grabbed them. And then lastly from there, again, possibly for this necklace, I got this really chunky industrial looking um, chain which you know I quite like because it's sort of it's sort of dark but um, somewhat opulent as well like and I don't know it's got that um what's the word I don't know it's it's just very industrial yet beautiful because like it almost looks like a huge chain that you would use in um, you know building or for machinery or whatever and not so much jewelry but at the same time it's a little bit more delicate than that so I just pictured that that could work for Skeksis jewelry and I kind of liked it regardless so if I don't use it for this project I could definitely picture using it for something else um, so happy I grabbed that all right completely random and totally separate to that from eBay I grabbed this tiny little packet of um, little nail jewels they are but I just thought they might be nice for using on other projects as well. I don't mind having a good selection of um, you know the plastic rhinestone things for crafts and I quite like the really detailed little ones. They're difficult to work with but you know if you spend a bit of time placing them onto something especially in that um, is it parve is that how you say it kind of design where, it, where it's totally encrusted in the jewels it can look really really pretty so and they're only two dollars like that was two dollars delivered actually I mean it took ages to get them but um, I will definitely use them for something so happy you got those all right now um, I forgot that I hadn't shown you this and this is kind of going to give away some of the costume thing that I'm going to try and do but I'm going to try and make it my own. Um, I bought this pattern so it's a simplicity pattern which I'm sure is a long way from simple um, <laughs> especially for me the last time I, I followed a pattern I think it was in um, high school and yeah it was like another language and I did not do well I remember the teacher being very angry at me for all the questions. It, I don't know if other people just found it easier or whatever but like yeah I didn't know what the hell I was doing so I'm not sure how this is gonna go given that but I would like to give it a try. I'd love to make my own costumes. I'd love to learn a bit more about sewing um, you know, I put so much detail into my necklaces and things that I'd like to be able to do more um, intricate stuff. Even if it was just that I learned how to make one type of thing, like corsets would be perfect. And then to be able to decorate those corsets 
with the beadwork and things that I do would be so good. So I noticed that this had a, a corset like top in there and I loved the um, neck corset with the arm piece coming down there. You know, looking sort of like armor, which is very much like one of the necklaces that I made, which is a neck corset. So I have made a neck corset before. And, uh, but this is a really cool design with the lace up at the back. And I can completely picture making that and um, beading it and turning it into something really interesting. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. So some of the lace that I got, potentially I may use in something like this. We'll see. Um, I bought some paint brushes, some nice fine detailed paint brushes because I have a severe lack of fine detailed paint brushes right now. So I thought they'd be handy, really cheap, five dollars each. They were just from, um, it's called Casa Living I think or something like that, a shop that we have here in um, near us that's just like a discount homewares shop and they had um, a craft section as well so I went and had a look at stuff there. Um, I also bought this hot pink foam um, glitter foam. Why did I buy it? I don't know. <laughs> what am I going to use it for? I don't know. Did I have to have it? Absolutely. Um, I mean it's hot pink glitter. Like, of course I had to buy this. I, I really don't know why I bought this though. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. I have no project in mind. I try not to do that. But I kept looking at these foam things for so long that I just thought, oh, screw it, I'm gonna get one. And maybe I'll be able to find a project for it. Um, but if not, at least it's, you know, Satisfied my craving for a glitter foam. <laughs> I also got a new paint um, palette because my I have three or four that are absolutely caked in crap, and then I accidentally melted one of them because I left the uh, the hot glue gun kind of fell off its stand and started melting its way through it. So not exactly what you want. So I figured I'd get another one and they're only a few dollars. So I got that. And then a couple of things of sequins. I love these sequins. I love them for beadwork as well because, so some sequins, um, the metallic color will like scratch off them. A lot of the, um, you know, just plain metallic colors and things like it'll scratch off. It'll end up, I think silver, it's usually silver underneath, but the color on top will usually come off, but some sequins, it doesn't scratch off. And these are ones that are good quality as in they won't, you know, the color won't come off. It's, um, I don't know. It, it's just not a coating that's going to scratch off the sequin. So those ones I will use in beadwork. I won't use anything where I know the coating can scratch off because eventually it will scratch off. Even if it's in a low wear part of the necklace, it ends up coming off. So um, yeah, so I grabbed those. I don't think there was... They, they had some other colours there, but I've got a couple of colours already. So I just grabbed two that I didn't have and you know if um, I'm working on something that needs those sort of colors I'll have them on hand oh yeah <laughs> we bought ink and I was like thinking oh I'll show it to you guys because it's like you know cheap discount ink um, half the price you would pay for because we had a Pixma um, can't remember which type of Pixma it was now the Canon Pixma something or other. Obviously one that works with this, but I can't remember. Uh, 526, um, 526, 525 compatible one anyway. Anyway, I was going to show you this because it's like half 
or more than half the price of regular ink and this was at Harvey Norman. Harvey Norman is um, like a, a furniture shop in Australia and it's known in Australia as being crazy prices. Um, you can negotiate the prices down which is why I think they jack the prices up but you usually will pay more for most things at Harvey Norman so I was very surprised to find that there. Now thing is uh, the other day our printer stopped working just wouldn't turn on so can't use that anymore which is a pain I'll have to see if um, anyone I know has one of these printers and I'll give them the ink so that it doesn't go to waste we have bought a new printer which my husband has set up already so that's good and um, yeah but that's a shame and I've also got a couple of things that I picked up from Riot Art and Craft um, that are these little coloured pegs that run special, um, I believe they were like a dollar or something like that, two dollars maybe. Um, and these feathers. So the pegs, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with yet, but um, I thought they could be good for like, you know, holding different papers and things like that potentially, or just... Some, some sort of fun craft project in the future but the feathers I wanted to put in the backdrop um, and possibly put a little um, ink you know nib on the on the bottom of it so it looks like a wizard's writing pen and maybe make a little ink well to go with it so that's what I'm going to do with that one Oh yeah, the only other thing I got was a selfie stick um, and I got this in the thought that it would be potentially good because I do, I do a fair bit of filming on my mobile phone when I'm out and about. Um, it's a very good phone, it's the um, Samsung S Plus, S9 Plus, sorry, um, which has a, a really good camera, image stabilisation and all of that in it. But, you know, if you're trying to film something like you with someone else or if you're out and about and you're trying to film things, you know, it's just, it might be handy to be able to lift the camera up higher or hold the camera out further. Um, you know, if you're trying to get a few people in frame and you're filming yourself, because you need to use that front camera to be able to see what's going on, yeah, I thought that could be good. And I was potentially going to be filming with someone um, I don't know if that's still happening but I got it anyway and I'm glad I did and and it is a tripod as well so it can sit as a tripod and then you can like close up the bottom to hold it and it's got remote um, like a wireless you know you can sort of press the button I think on this um, stick part to activate things on the phone I haven't worked out I haven't even opened this yet so I'm not sure how it all works yet but hopefully it'll be good so yeah selfie stick all right guys so that's it bit of a mixed bag of craft bits and pieces that I've bought over a period of time um, from various different places if there's anything in particular you want to know where I got it and I haven't linked it let me know but I'll try and put links um, to the places that I got the things uh, as I edit and everything. Um, so videos to come will be some videos on the um, Skeksis necklace. Once I work out what on earth I'm doing with it, um, I'll hopefully film some of that and you know start filming some of the um, process like I did before for the dark crystal necklace. I figure what I'll do to make it easier on myself, I won't commit to it being a weekly series because that was just too much and I'll just bring it a video once I have an update on what's going on with it because it's such a big project to do a necklace like that and then um, film like 12 hours of footage per video, edit that into a little segment that you can watch without you know sitting there forever so it's just it's a lot of work so I'm, I'm just going to probably have them more spaced out than last time uh, I'll probably have a video on me trying to 
do something with this. Um, as some of my craft videos are, they're less tutorial and more me fumbling my way through things, uh, which is honestly some of my PMC videos because I am not um, a PMC expert, nor do I claim to be. Um, so, and I hopefully make that clear in some of my videos where I'm like, I don't know whether this is going to work. Or I tell you I tried a thing and it didn't work. Um, so I hope you enjoy that side of it because I mean that's the reality of doing craft. You know, the the videos where you see something perfectly working guarantee you they tried 15 times to get to that point probably or at least a few times to get to that point that didn't work that you didn't see. So instead of that you'll watch and see me whatever happens with this probably either I'll get really like likely I will just get really annoyed with it and um, have no idea what I'm doing and I don't know I'm hoping something good will come out of that I have a few other bits and pieces of um, things that I have planned to to bring you that I'm hoping to bring soon but I'm not going to mention them because there's just a lot going on so I just don't know like some things just keep getting pushed back and back because of different videos that I'm doing or projects that are coming up so that's okay it's just the way of it you know you just sort of follow um, I just sort of follow what's what I need to be doing at that time and if something has to be pushed back a little bit so be it um, backdrop still work in progress at this point when I'm filming but again hopefully that will be finished very soon I'm not far off and then I'll be filming background that way again which uh, I'm looking forward to because this is a mess that's another big project is rearranging my studio and bringing you a studio tour so anyway lots of things in the works um, I hope you guys are excited for some of those things uh, and some of the videos that will be coming up if there's any kind of videos that you like, wish I'd do more of, would prefer I didn't do, um, or whatever, let me know. Um, again, as always, be nice. I'm sensitive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, always good to hear from you guys. Hit subscribe if you want to see all this crazy craft situation coming to fruition or falling apart in front of you. Either way. Um, and for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Faywood. Bye guys!